What is up everyone, my name is Michael Pohl with Bay Area Aquatics and today we're going to do one of the most requested videos I get, which is a tour of my fish room. So I often get asked what my fish room looks like, why don't I show off my fish room a little more, um, why do I do tight shots only of the tanks, and this is pretty much why. Um, this is my most of my fish room. This is most of my tanks in the frame right here. You can see this is actually a closet. Um, this is my bedroom. And so I gutted my closet, took over the hallway closet for most of my clothes in that, and uh, this is my fish room now. One of the things that I really wanted to do was I wanted to maximize the space that I used um, because I don't have a lot of it and I wanted to keep as many as I can, efficiently as I can, throughout all of this. So I have this stand that I built. Um, it's built specifically for this closet, for this frame. Um, it's got the things on the side. I built it slightly wider just because I want to be able to sit stuff on the side. Um, it's got my 75 on top and then it sits out far enough that the hang on back filters don't hit the closet here, but the tank is still within the actual closet confinement. I left the shelving in the top so I can have some storage and not waste the space above the tank. Um, and then I left the rod in to be able to hang my air pump off of it. And so obviously, First tank is the big 75 gallon. This is the one you see in most of my videos. This is the background for it. It's got a beams work light, two AquaClear 110s, a USB air pump from Aquarium Co-op, um, and then a, a small sponge filter in the corner with a cis stone in it so that I, I can have just a pre-done sponge uh, ready to go and get some extra oxygen in the tank. And uh, I'm not gonna do a super in-depth review of every tank, um, but I've done a highlight on this one. I'm working on highlights for the other ones. Um, so be sure to check them out. And then below it, I have my newest project, which is my breeding rack setup. And so this is my 10 gallon, 10 gallon, and 10 gallon. I've got the glass lids on it that we've done in a video before that I really like. Um, I've got a Nick crew light over these two. And I just got this aqua neat light like yesterday. Um, so I'm playing with that, seeing how I like it for 10 bucks. I figure it should be a, a pretty decent uh, bet. In this tank, I've got Japanese rice fish, um, working on breeding those out. This tank, I have least killifish. They're very, very shy, um, but I am getting a lot of fry. I, I started with six and I counted 12 or 13 of them today. Um, so I'm definitely getting some breeding. And then this is my guppy tank with my red koi tuxedo guppies. And so I'm gonna do an update on this tank too. Um, they're finally, the first generation of them are finally getting big enough to where I can sex them. Um, I don't know if they'll be big enough to go to my club auction in a week and a half, um, but if not, they'll definitely be big enough by January to take up to my club auction. I also keep my live foods here. So I've got Grindle worms and micro worms um, on each tank. Each breeding tank has its own set of them. Um, and then I keep the extra one for my Scarlet Battis, um, the Grindle worms in here just because I don't want it out in the display room. Um, and so, yeah. Back here, I've got my brine shrimp hatchery. Um, I've got my little pet travel container for when I do uh, breeding shows um, and just some extra, like I've got a spare heater. Um, and some random parts. I may put a 10 gallon tank here eventually. Um, I want to, but I don't know where I would put my brine shrimp. So that's the one thing that I'm kind of watching on. If I get a, if I get a chance to get a fish that's like really cool, um, I will put a 10 gallon here, not pass it up. But at the moment, I've just got the, uh, the brine shrimp here because I need a space to kind of put it. As far as power for all the tanks, I've got three power strips underneath, bolted underneath the plywood here. Um, I've got this one over here controls all of the electrical outlets for the 75 gallon. Um, so I can turn that off when I'm doing water changes. The one down here controls all of the outlets for the one in the middle controls all of the outlets for the breeding tanks down below. And then I've got a little USB uh, splitter that I plug into it so I can plug all the USB air pumps into one plug instead of having a bunch of plugs taken up. And then the uh, air strip or the power strip over here is actually for my lights. So that way I can keep all my lights on when I'm doing water changes. And I don't have to worry about, you know, turning off my filters and now I can't see with the lights. The beam door takes a little bit to kick back on. Um, and so that, that's why I put them on a separate timer. And they are on a smart timer just because the timer is like way back here. Um, and so that way I can turn them on and off with my Google Home or with my phone. I can schedule them. And that way I don't have to like easily access the timer. Even though I do like the mechanical timers, the wireless ones are just a lot easier for that. As far as equipment in the breeding tanks, I've got, like I said, the glass lids. Each of these tanks has a, a 50 watt Eheim Jagger heater in it. Um, this tank and this tank have a Lee's box filter, a small one, um, that's running off of the uh, USB air pumps. And then this one has a medium size aquarium cop sponge filter, the coarse one, running off of a USB air pump. As far as storage around the, uh, the tanks here, I've got my water changing, my nets and stuff like that in this bucket here. I keep my python in this bucket down below or in this bin down below. I keep a rag on each side of the closet. Uh, this is one of the aquarium co-op ones. This is just a golf towel 
um, just so that if I'm putting my hands in the uh, tank, I can quickly wipe it off. These are just 3M commander hook thingies. Um, I also have these specimen container holders on each side. So I can plop a specimen container there, just keep it up out of the way, just because these are big and bulky. Um, and all that is is just simple one by two screwed into the wall on the studs. I also have everything organized in boxes up on the shelf here. So this is the stuff that I access most often. I have a little bit more storage up here. I have like vinegar, um, some spare sponge material, things like that that I don't use very often up there, but I still wanted to keep. Um, and then I have each thing sorted into its own box. So I've got air filters in this box. So I have some spare sponge filters, some box filters, etc. I keep all my food in this box because it's the easiest one to pull in and out. And I keep all of my air supplies in this one. So this is like my extra pumps, my extra tubing, things like that. I keep all my medication in here. So all my extra medication, aquarium salt, um, the little dosing syringe, little 10 milliliter syringes. Uh, this is my hang on back filter stuff. And so I keep extra media, I keep the boxes and um, the extra like impellers and stuff like that all go in this box. This is my miscellaneous box. So this has my like test kit. It's got a shrimp food dish and some stuff like that that just didn't really fit anything else. Um, so I just kind of needed to put it in a box. This is my breeding box. Um, so it's got my tubbleware, my breadcrumbs, my yeast, my spirulina powder, things like that for my microworms, grindleworms. Um, anything for live foods goes pretty much in this bin. I've got my polyfill for the uh, AquaClear 110s pre-cut up and in a bag up here. And then off to the side here, I have aquarium co-op fry food. I have Fritz glass cleaner. I have my own mix of fry food. Uh, I keep my prime, ick X, uh, safe, the big thing of aquarium co-op, uh, easy green. Um, the small thing of aquarium go up easy green, um, some spare ceramic media and some carbon up in this corner here. And so I keep mainly the foods up in the front um, just because that's what I use all the time and the safe and prime and stuff I can dig out when I'm doing water changes, it's not too big of a deal. Oh, and before I forget, I'm standing on a, a rubber floor mat. This is from Home Depot. It's, it's I think it's a three by four uh, foot like rubber mat. I put this down just because I am on carpet and I was having my hands in the tank enough that you get those random drops and it hits in the carpet and I just, it's easier to wipe it up when it's on this rubber mat. Um, so that's the only reason it's here. It kind of slides a little bit on the carpet. It's not perfect, but it, uh, it does what I need it to do. And for, you know, 20 bucks, it's not that big of a deal. Come talk about my shrimp tank and white cloud minnow tank. Um, this is another 10 gallon tank. I've had shrimp in this tank for over a year at this point. Um, so it's actually one of my oldest tanks that's been set up. Um, it's powered off of a sponge filter with a USB nano air pump. It's got a Nick crew light on the top of it. The Nick crew lights plugged into the wireless timer. I've got a power strip here um, that's just kind of Velcroed to the side of the dresser here. Um, it's pretty well planted. I've got a bunch of cherry shrimp and then some white cloud minnows in it, um, along with microsword and stuff like that. This one's going to get a little bit of an overhaul pretty soon. Um, I just haven't had a chance to actually do it. Oh, and then the other thing that I forgot to mention earlier is I do have a light up in the closet here, so I can turn that on and off. Um, I've got a light up here for the camera. Um, so it's not that big of a deal, but when the light turns off for the camera, let me actually pop that. When I turn this off, it makes the aquarium viewing really nice, but it makes it really hard to see up here in the top closet. It makes it really hard to see down below if the aquarium lights are off for whatever reason. And so having this to turn it on, it's a $10 light from Walmart. I've just got it bolted to the wall. Um, and then I've got the power strip with a switch down here so I can turn it on and off. And that way I can uh, control it pretty easily. And so that's just a little extra like $10 hack or whatever that I did just so I can see up here a little easier and I'm not like constantly shining a flashlight up. Other than that, I have two tanks that aren't in my room. One is at my office. It's a 20 gallon long tank. It's got some neon tetras and my beta fish in it. Um, I've showed that to you guys in a previous video. And then I've got a, a tank that I haven't shown you guys since I've redone it. It used to be my beta fish tank out in the hallway. It is now my Scarlet Battis tank and it's got some coolie loaches in there with it. Um, I'm hoping to put some clown killie fish in there. I just haven't been able to get a hold of them. Um, every time I go to the store, they're sold out. The wholesaler's sold out. And I don't want to order them online in the middle of winter. But even that tank's going to get a rescape uh, probably next week, right before my club auction, because I'm going to pull some of the plants out and take most of the plants and uh, get new plants for all of it. So. so real quick, one thing that I forgot to mention is I do also have a temperature humidity measure thing um, just so I can make sure the humidity doesn't get out of control in my room. I haven't had any humidity issues yet. Um, but definitely, oh, it unplugged, but definitely something uh, smart to have if you have a bunch of tanks in a room to monitor your humidity. And then I also have my 55 gallon white cloud mountain minnow pond that sits out on my porch. Um, I was going to take you guys out there and, and show you it, but it's currently pouring rain here in California. Uh, not so much when I took the picture, but it, it's supposed to be the, the first big storm hitting here in a while. Um, and so 
didn't feel like standing out in the rain, didn't feel like standing on my porch doing it. Um, so I just took a quick picture. I've done videos of it in the past, so you guys can go back and look at that too. And yeah, that's pretty much my fish room. Uh, that's all I can really think about. Um, oh, I didn't cover shrimp foods. I keep the Shrimp King food in Bacter AE up here just because that's the only, uh, only tank that I've got it. And I do have cherry shrimp in the guppy tank as well. I just put some down there. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. I can't think of anything else. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much my fish room. Um, like I said, when I film videos, I normally have a folding chair that I put right here. Camera's in roughly the same spot, just a different lens. Um, and that's what you see in the back of me all the time. And like I said, this is my bedroom. So like, this is my mini fridge. I've got my bed is right back there. My computer setup's up there. My TV's mounted up above the computer setup. Got the dresser and then a bookshelf. Um, so I definitely am limited on space. This is about as maxed out as I can go. But I think it's pretty efficient. And for what I do, it, it works pretty well. And yeah, I'm gonna pretty much end the video here because I don't wanna keep rambling on about random stuff. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments down below. If you want any more details on anything that I've shown, let me know and I will I can highlight those in a future video. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is, this is how I fit five tanks in my bedroom. Um, in reality, I could fit six tanks in here with the same setup uh, if I move the brine shrimp. And, uh, and I can breed fish and have my big display tank. And I was gonna do a big rack in here, but I wanted a big display tank. And so I decided to go with the 75. Um, I store all my stuff in here. The only thing that's excess is these two buckets down here. Everything else is stored in the closet. All the fish stuff that I have is up there. Um, and then like I said, I've got the one fish tank out in the hallway, the one at the office, and then the one pond. So let me know if you have any space saving tips for me. Um, let me know if you have a tight fish room or tight fish closet or whatever. Um, I know a lot of people are really limited on space, can't dedicate a whole room to it, but they like to have their stuff and, and they can kind of create all these cool little solutions. Um, and yeah, and so that's pretty much it. Like I said, thanks for watching guys. Um, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it a lot. Hit the bell notification so you get notified every time I upload a video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.